look different now, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We look professional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to The Compressor Guru. Uh, we're here today with uh, Gene Roberts, and this is his old automotive shop. He's some sort of retired. Some I'm semi-retired. Yeah. I bought a restaurant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good place. Osceola Mills Rendezvous. Good food. It's on old 970. Uh, nice place to go. Anyway, so he's now in the restaurant business, but he still tinkers in his garage, and his compressor won't start under a full load. Uh, it'll start from zero and pump all the way up. So evidently we have an unloader or a check valve problem. We're going to go back and fire the compressor up, and we're going to see what we find. Here we go. Hi, Hi. Gene. This is the Compressor Guru with... Gene Roberts. And we're working on a compressor we sold Gene in the mid-90s, and it won't restart. It'll pump up from zero, but when it goes to restart from 175 or 150, it won't restart. Now, we let it pump up, and there's an unloader line, and we have such great lighting here. There's an unloader line right here. It goes from the intercooler down to the pressure switch. And when that pressure switch opens, so does the valve on the unloader in the pressure switch and when it shut down it went just like it's supposed to so that is not the problem i brought a pressure switch with a new unloader i figured it's clogged up or quit working or broke after all these years but with uh, this design which ingersoll did abandon after only a couple years uh not the pump design but the unloader design where they're only unloading the uh, intercooler, they started running this copper line from there to a port on the check valve. And that way, when the machine shuts down on the newer models, uh, it bleeds everything from here and in the compressor. And when the compressor restarts, it restarts with no load. I can prove the check valve's leaking by. That should quit leaking. So that's why you're not starting, you're pumping, you're trying to start against tank pressure. So we're going to get you a new check valve, and we're going to call this diagnosed, and you, you can fix it, because you're a mechanic, and I'm going to turn you loose on your own. The other thing I would do is there's going to be a port on the side of the check valve, and I would take and I'd run a new copper line from right here at the, this pressure switch and I'd run it to the port on the check valve. That way you unload the entire system. It's, you don't only just have a bad check valve, which you don't only just have a bad check valve, but if this isn't the most efficient way to unload the compressor. So when you put your check valve in, you're gonna run a new line from this unloader on that pressure switch. From the pressure switch. And here's here's a pressure switch so that we can see it easily. That brass. The copper line goes there. Yep. And run it over to your check valve. And so it, there will be a port. Yep. Over here to yep, run a line to. And I'm gonna walk out the truck and get you the now. Check would you unit. recommend I run the line in any particular place? I would run it straight down and under the... Under the... Yep, and straight okay, over to under it. Under the base. Yep. Okay. Important safety tip, Gene. Everybody listen to this. Do not go to change that check valve until you drain the tank down to zero. That You take that off, that'll come out of there like a bullet. If you pulled that check... Oh, then I can pull it out of the woodwork up well, here. you can pull it out of the ceiling because it'll probably go through the woodwork. <laughs> Let's see. Right now it's only going to blast it at 160 pound probably. Yep. And that's enough to ruin your day. Yeah. So drain it to zero. I'm going to go get a check valve and we'll explain this in the daylight. And This is a simple diagnosis. And So you got a good picture of this? I think I got yeah. a good picture of uh, that. They might want to see a picture of the new style you're going to give yeah. me. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, Gene, you have this stored where? This is for your garage, right? Yes, this is in my garage. I had an automotive business, which I closed 
five, six years ago. And you have this under the steps. Yeah, but I got holes for air to come in everywhere around here. Ah. It, and it really hasn't heated up. If I used it oh, more, yeah. I, see I would probably want to put a fresh air into the compressor. Right. Now, while we're talking about things, we just did a service call where this tube had cracked. Yep. And we just changed that on a 10 horsepower. Now, when you go to take this that elbow out of the check valve put the nut back on so that when you first break it off break it loose this nut is still in that elbow <clears throat> the elbow will crush very easily because it's got very thin walls and then it's internally flared and it's made of brass so put the nut back in it and cheat the wrench down to the lower part so you're not on the thinnest part of the wall and you will not find that fitting anywhere except Steiner's Compressor and Supply. Because <laughs> plumbing shops don't handle internally flared fittings like this for the average Joe. So, here's the check valve that's going to replace the current problem. And here's a port that he will put a fitting in and run a copper line over to here and it's that simple there's nothing complicated about it I thought I'd show you the two pieces out of the little dark hole where we just were <laughs> so but uh, put make sure you put pipe dope on it put a plug in one side put a, a compression fit in the other okay I have one more question yeah what do I do about where the line's hooked on now? Just plug it? Yeah. Take the you fitting can take, out? You can take the fitting out, put a quarter inch plug in. Or put a plug, plug in. in. Okay. Yeah. And I can... Uh, Will that fitting move down to here then? Yep. Okay. I'll put a pipe plug in the other side. And you might have to do a little bending on that copper pipe because that's, that's taller. Yeah. That design that Ingersoll used, like that, unloading the intercooler, and whether they put a check valve in or whether they just went with a bushing, they only did this for a year or two and went, this isn't working well enough. And considering you used it 25, 26 years and, oh, yeah. and haven't had a problem with it, you've done well. <laughs> there you go, Gene. How much? 25. 25 whole dollars. Yep. Is that too much? What if I said yes? 30. <laughs>
Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.